What happened at a wedding that let you know the marriage was going to end in a divorce? Story 1. At the rehearsal dinner, the groom's mom is in tears because he looks miserable and he was we all knew it. During the vows they had written for each other, the bride starts with, I know I can be a pretty terrible person and I don't know why you've stuck around, but that's all going to change starting today. They were divorced a year later. Story 2. I thought my sister's wedding was. Her husband got out drunk and they got into an argument. He passed out and she ended up throwing a bucket of ice water in his face to snap him out of it. She was devastated about it. Happy ending. He made it up to her big time. Also, he felt very out of it, even the next day. Turns out he had traces of Rohypnol in his system. His own brother roofied him in hopes he wouldn't marry my sister because he wanted their own friendship to remain the same. My brother-in-law has disowned most of his family because of this, and his brother just got out of a four-year prison sentence. Story 3. The bride, whom I didn't even know, apparently designated me to help decorate the reception hall prior to the wedding. I went to do so, and her mother was there, telling me in a hushed, scared whisper, that I better not mess anything up because the bride would be furious. Everything was to be a certain way, and if it was wrong, there'd be hell to pay. I gave her the benefit of the doubt, chalked it up to wedding anxiety, and during the reception, I tried to chat with her a bit, and she literally rolled her eyes at me. I also didn't see her look at the groom once at the wedding or the reception. They were split less than a year later. Later, the groom confided to me and my husband that the morning of the wedding he'd been filled with an overwhelming feeling of dread and spent several hours just sitting on his lawn, thinking, I shouldn't do this, but it was paid for. Tons of guests were waiting. Lots of family, including us, had come in from out of state, and he felt he had to go through with it. Apparently, the bride had a history of being awful and controlling. No clue what made him propose to her in the first place. Edit. Just Facebook stalked the ex-bride. Her latest status update is announcing her wedding date with a new guy. Someone jokingly asked in the comments if they've set a date for the divorce. Oh, snap. Story 4. Holy cow. My cousin John's wedding was basically just a preamble to an elaborate dance of divorce that we all knew was coming from the moment the engagement began. For context, this took place 15 years ago in the backwoods of NC. My family is just a generation or two removed from snake handling in church. So some of the wackiness is the product of upwardly mobile inbreeding and redneck gumption. Just a few things that come to mind. Her fiancé proposed to her over the corpse of her father. He was over with the family watching TV when Jan's dad collapsed on the floor. He passed away before emergency services arrived. Her boyfriend grabbed her hands as she was sitting next to her father's body, pulled her up to her feet, and then asked her to marry him. He later said that he didn't want her to get away. The fiancé then disappeared for a month the week after the funeral. Nobody knew where to reach him. The bride's white trash mother told John that she had to get married within four months because she, the mother my aunt, planned to move to another state with her new boyfriend to avoid bill collectors. When John's fiancé showed back up, he was cagey and weird. Eventually, it came out that he'd been living with his ex-girlfriend because she insisted that he had to give her a month of his life or she'd take him to court for child support that he was supposed to be paying on their infant son but had never paid. Throughout all of this, John continued to insist that she wanted to marry him. My mother and I did most of the wedding prep and arrangements. John's mom, despite insisting on the four-month timeline to help pay for the wedding before her move, never contributed a dime. And we were both pretty convinced that the wedding was going to be canceled at any moment. But the day arrived, and so did the principal players. At the wedding itself, the groom walked around drinking PBR out of a massive travel thermos with a novelty straw and told everyone who would listen that John was a good starter wife. Jan threw several tantrums about stupid cow, including one in which she accused the groom of stealing her drink. He told her she was a dumb worker, but it all worked out because then she found her drink. The groom pulled the ring off of John's finger during the reception and swallowed it as a joke. The groom picked a fight with his father because his dad had asked the ex-girlfriend to stay at home, and the groom had really wanted her to be there. John was in the dark about this invitation until the fight broke out. Epilogue. Shocking precisely nobody, except possibly Jan herself, they eventually did divorce. Eating the ring caused the groom some discomfort, so they had to cancel their honeymoon to the mountains so that he could go to the ER and get hospital-grade laxatives. They lost money on the cancellation and the ER visit, which they really didn't have to lose. That resulted in some immediate debt problems, and they lost the trailer they'd planned to rent when they couldn't come up with the deposit. That resulted in both of them moving into the groom's parents' home, into his old bedroom. Things went downhill from there. The groom's ex-girlfriend popped back up less than three months after the wedding, heavily pregnant with his second child. She went after him for another shared month, but Jan wasn't cool with it. The ex ended up taking him to court for child support. Jan got a second job to make ends meet while resigning herself to living with her in-laws for a while longer. 
One day after he dropped her off at work, the groom sold Jan's car. He then disappeared for several more weeks. She lost both jobs and shortly thereafter realized she was pregnant. The groom accused her of cheating because he thought he couldn't have more than two children in a lifetime and his ex-girlfriend had already filled the quota. As I understand it, this is what ultimately caused the rift in their relationship. Story 5 During the ceremony when the priest started asking the bride, Do you take this man to be your... She started laughing uncontrollably and couldn't stop. This was cute for about 10 seconds, and then things got real uncomfortable. They lasted a year and change. We all kind of knew the only reason they were getting married was because she got pregnant. Story 6 Groom got so drunk at the reception... He passed out in the honeymoon suite by himself, but not before he latched the door so it couldn't be unlocked from the outside. Seeing the bride kicking the door and hollering at the top of her lungs to be let in at 3 a.m. was not encouraging. They divorced like two years later. Story 7. I was working at a wedding factory. On Monday, we got a call the Saturday wedding was canceled. They were told that they would lose the deposit, around $7,000. Then on Thursday, they said it was back on. When the guests arrived, everyone was pissed off. It seems they told everyone was it was off, then two days later that it was on. The ceremony was about three minutes. The bride then changed into sweatpants and then everyone got angry drunk. Well, this won't last long, I thought. Then on the following Monday, the bride walked into my, then wife's, divorce attorney's office. Story 8. Our friend was the girl who had spent a whole year setting up for the one day. They had taken six months of dancing lessons and she has spent a ridiculous amount of time looking good and dressing up her bridesmaids for the wedding, of which my wife was one. So come the night of the wedding, the groom meets up with his old friends and starts to get blackout drunk. He got so drunk he didn't even recognize us, rather just pushing us aside to get to the bathroom. The worst part was the dance itself. It was really heartbreaking to see them stumble around and watch the panic on her face as he realized he had no idea what was going on. I gave it six months at the time, but they ended up three years. She ended up marrying another woman. Story 9 it was a shotgun wedding. They proudly proclaimed it as such. Overheard the bride's mother saying that the bride was such a later bloomer for waiting until 19 to trap herself a man. The child is three years old and they have been separated, don't know if divorced, since she was one. Story 10. My cousin's wedding. The groom invited his ex, who was also the mother of his one-year-old son. He and my cousin had been dating for longer than two years. And my cousin, who was then very pregnant herself, got into a loud screaming match with him over it in a bath. They eventually came out and got married. My cousin with puffy red eyes from crying that you can see in every wedding photo that was taken. Story 11. They spent $1.50K on a Disney wedding, and the bride spent zero time anywhere near the in-laws for several hours. She ran off a week later. Edit. Holy cow, my inbox. Here's to you, uncle. That bad person can eat cow. <laughs> also, he's not my uncle by blood. But that's how I know he's a good guy. Maybe closer to a savior of the messed up in the head, but still good. Story 12. I do audiovisual for social events, a lot of weddings. At one engagement party, my co-worker tells the story of the soon-to-be groom trying to carry off his soon-to-be bride. You know, because he's manly and will have his way with her. Anyways, she is screaming at him to put her down. And when he finally complies, she slaps him right across the face and yells, I'm not done dancing! Story 13. Four people made speeches. The bride joked about the first time she dated the groom when she was 16, and he was 26. The groom was wasted and spoke about how each of the previous times they broke up didn't count and that they would do it right this time. The maid of honor talked about how even when they were broken up, they still got along, and the best man made poor jokes. Groom's brother didn't attend because he too had banged the bride before. Story 14. My uncle red-faced and screaming at 14-year-old me on his wedding day to make sure I wear rubber band, so I don't have to marry some bad person I knocked up. Edit, word, edit. This was 30 years ago when having children out of wedlock still carried a stigma. I'm sure my grandfather told my uncle to do the right thing and marry her. My mother, who is older than my uncle, got kicked out of the house at 18 for being pregnant with me, and I'm sure that influenced my uncle's decision. Story 15. I was reunited with a family member just before her wedding. We went out drinking, and she proudly pointed out a guy at the bar that she'd just gone on a trip with and had a week-long prenup close relationship romp. She seemed to think I'd think that was naughty and funny. I just felt bad for her future husband, but figured it was just a bad choice. The day of the wedding, I went to see her in the bridal suite. She had the guy there W him. She's messed up him the night before the wedding. They lasted a few years, but it was a miserable few. Story 16. My cousin married a nice, respectable girl from Connecticut. But he is a not-so-nice, not-so-respectable Massachusetts stereotype from Norfolk County. Cuz got with his band of Mickeys and Sullys the night before. And when I saw him for pictures that morning, he was sucking on a pint of Skull Vodka 
before throwing it in the corner of the church and calling his friend a cock fag. He had the same grin on his face for every picture. I pumped some coffee into him. We thought we had it under control, but during the ceremony, he flipped off the guest twice. His brother also taped help me on the bottom of his shoes for when they took the mass. The bride's father was furious, but then came the reception. My mom didn't want to go. I wish we hadn't. Cuz continued sucking down booze, as did his pals. The bride, God save her, wanted to go ahead with the first dance. Stand by me. Cuz didn't put down his drink, was grabbing her peach during the dance, and finally spilled it all down her dress. She slapped him. He pushed her. Father of the groom charges the dance floor. The bench is clear. My brother and I ask mom if she wants us to get involved. She grabs her purse and says, let's leave. As his buddies were holding Cuz back, she walked over, slapped him, and said, Thank God your grandmother passed away, you disgraceful little mick. Mama is a very quiet woman. We grabbed Mama and hightailed it out. Two cops passed us on the way in. They began the annulment one week later. I haven't talked to him since, although he emailed me asking if he could borrow $5,000. He lives in a camper from what I hear. Story 17. Toward the end of the reception, the bride suggested to the groom he run home and change into street clothes so they could clean the venue and get the deposit returned. Groom got back and bride had opened all the gift envelopes and paid back relatives with the cash they contained. Source, the groom was me. Story 18. I wasn't there, but my neighbor is a wedding DJ. Apparently a couple of weeks ago, she was at a wedding where the bride did her first dance with her ex, who for some reason was invited, because he was a better dancer than her new husband, and she didn't want to get in her words, shown up. Story 19. A bunch of my family members are betting on how long one of my cousin's marriage would last. It's definitely going to end in divorce, but we just don't know when. Here's all the cow that happened. Pre-wedding. The couple can't even agree on invitation card designs, so they decided each would have their own. Some people received two invitations. Wedding. They're both from different, and the groom's family insisted on having a wedding ceremony from their culture, too. The bride refused the part where she has to kneel before her husband and wash his feet clean. The groom's family insisted, and she was stuck doing it. The bride got tired with all the photo taking and refused to pose for any more photographs even though she hadn't taken photos with the groom's extended family. Meanwhile, she had already taken photos with her entire family, extended family, and parents' friends. The groom's cousin told the bride she walked in elegantly, and she spent hours crying and refusing to come out for the wedding dinner. Half the groom's family boycotted the wedding over the bride's race religion post-wedding. The bride insisted they should fly first class for their honeymoon. The groom insisted it's a waste of money, even though they both come from money. The bride flew first class. The groom stuck to economy. Story 20. My cousin got his casual hookup pregnant, and somehow they came to the conclusion that they needed to get married. Instead of going and getting quietly married, they decided they needed a gigantic, expensive wedding. Like, five-course meal, 300-plus guests, 12 bridesmaids, kind of wedding. Obviously, something like this takes a while to plan, and as a result, she was about seven months pregnant. Now, nothing wrong with going down the aisle while expecting, but she chose this corseted dress that was cinched so tight it nearly flattened her bump out. As someone who has been pregnant, I can't imagine how uncomfortable that must have been. The fact that they had only known each other eight months and she was seven months pregnant was like the elephant in the room the entire wedding. She refused to acknowledge the fact that she was pregnant. She had been out of college for 10 plus years and invited all her sorority sisters. They got up and all sang this weird sorority song together. Very odd for an over 30 woman. I'm probably not explaining it very well, but it was like she was trying to act like she was much younger. They were married about four years, way longer than anyone thought it would last. Story 21. A bit different, but here's my story. Married less than a year and a mutual friend my wife and I had got married. During the ceremony, my wife is crying and I asked her why, expecting a response of happy for him or something. And she said, I always thought I would be the one to marry him. She ended up cheating on me with him and we went out separate ways. Story 22. They only got married because they had unprotected close relationship on their first date and conceived a child. Fast forward a few months, the bride objects to going to the groom's friend for flowers for the wedding because she has a religious objection to the boy lifestyle. Turns out she's also incredibly. The groom is not, or at all, and was appalled to find out that his new wife wouldn't approve of most of his friends. The baby hasn't even been born yet and the divorce is pending. Story 23. Not all of it was at the wedding, but on our way to our honeymoon, we were on a flight with this couple sitting behind us. She boarded the plan with a giant carry-on and a garment bag with her dress in it. Once they found their seats, she shoved her bags at him to put away and then went to use the lavatory for about 15 minutes. She was really nasty towards him the whole time. Fast forward to running into them at the resort. She was super stuck up into every female and all of the staff. 
She didn't seem to have a problem grinding on four or five different guys during one of the dance night themed events while her husband to be drank alone at the bar. Finally, the day of their wedding came, and my husband ran into the groom sitting alone outside at the cafe with a drink in his hand. He sat down to chat with him, and the guy explained that he was freaking out because they had no friends or family at the wedding because literally no one that knew him liked her or approved of the wedding, and that he wasn't even sure what he was doing there. My husband tells him he's sure it's cold feet and to just have a drink to calm his nerves. The groom replies that this is his fifth drink. It's like 11 a.m. already. We had an oceanfront villa, and they got married right outside of our back door. He looked like he was going to bolt for sure. I guess that was her plan the whole time, trap him on a remote island. Story 24. Her vows. They were friends of mine who dated for nearly two years before their wedding. He loved her more than she loved him, obvious to all our friends, and we suspected she begrudgingly said yet to his proposal. He said his vows first and went on and on about loving her for the rest of his life. During hers, she started with 438 days. That's how long I've loved. It seemed sweet until she ended her vows with, and I promise to love you for at least 438 more. Most thought nothing of it, and some friends called me a banana for saying it was a subconscious sign she wasn't in it for the long haul. She left him exactly that amount of days after the wedding with a note that said, I kept my vow to love you for 438 days more but I can't for a single day more. Called it. Story 25. Not a wedding, but a proposal. Girl is a good friend from HS. She was 20 when this happened, and the guy was 21. Guy proposes by changing his FB status to engaged and posts, girl's name, what you think? And she responded on FB, sure. Engagement lasted a month. Asked her about it later? Seeing as agreeing to something like that seemed out of character for her. She told me at first she thought it was a joke. And then when she realized he was serious about marriage, thought maybe he was just asking her if she was ready to become engaged and that the real proposal was coming. Nope, that was the proposal. He even started trying to plan the wedding to which she replied, you haven't even proposed yet. I mean, he hadn't even gotten her a ring, which I know you don't have to, but come on. After she realized that was his way of proposing, she ended the engagement and he left her with, if we aren't going to be engaged, then I don't see a point in staying. Poor girl was really broken up about it, but I think she dodged a bullet. Story 26. He didn't look me in the eyes during the entire ceremony. He stared at the preacher the whole flipping time, gave me a kiss on the hand when it was time to kiss the bride. Also, didn't tell me that his father was a close relationship pervert that wanted to pound me. He thought it was normal and okay for his dad to think this about me. Edit. I truly didn't expect this to gain this much attention, but thank you guys for commenting and asking questions. I was having a poor day earlier, but remembering some of this crazy marriage cow has given me a few laughs this evening and reminded me of how great of a life I have now. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks again. Edit 2. Wow. First off, the top five list is posted under all these comments. I posted it last night before all of this really gained attention. I didn't expect anyone else to be interested this much into my story, lol. I haven't checked this since last night, about 12 hours, and there were a ton of more comments and questions. But thanks again, everyone. Story 27. At the wedding, bride-to-be turns up 30 minutes late, arrives inconsolably sobbing, helped down the aisle. Ceremony weird and filled with cries from the bride. Afterwards, spoke to the bride's father and asked how things were. His response, well, that was like getting a cat in a paper bag. Divorced three months later. Backstory was the groom, whom we knew, was from a wealthy family. Bride's family saw Dollar Dollar and persuaded their darling daughter to marry the guy. She realized the mistake. She ended up with nothing. His family had money, but the groom was young and had nothing. Messed up up people out there, folks. Story 28. The groom, groomsman, groom's friends, groom's father, etc. All males, just for clarification, kept making jokes about being tied down, having a nagging wife the end of being single, not being able to flirt with other women. Basically, everything was about how marriage actually sucks. This is something I will never understand. If marriage sounds that awful to you, why even get married? Story 29, 2, 1. At what I've dubbed the worst wedding ever, the bride and groom were an hour late, argued with everyone at the wedding, ran out of food at the reception, and made the groom's mom cried by yelling at her, too. When the bride cried through the entire ceremony, it clicked in my head that she wasn't just roommates with the guy she lived with, not the groom. They were an actual couple. She married the groom because her mom wanted her to do so. A year later, she was making up this story about the husband being a control bad person, like that crummy Julia Roberts movie where she runs away from the freaky husband. Meanwhile, the guy was just nice and quiet and didn't do anything that she said he did. Story 30. This is late, but I work in hotels and I see about a wedding a week. 
The craziest one had to be one where the groom dropped a massive bomb on the whole wedding. When the best man was done giving his speech, the groom grabbed the microphone and said, I just wanted to let everyone know that the bride is flipping the best man. I've known for a while, but I wanted the bride's family to spend ton of money on a wedding. And then he got up and walked out. Flipping nuts. Story 31. My cousin. Married a Marine with one kid from a previous relationship. The kid is a sweet little girl, but it's obvious, just from the time spent at the wedding, how much my cousin prefers her own child over the little girl. It's really sad to see it unravel on Facebook every now and then. Story 32. I work night audit at a hotel that does a lot of weddings. Last weekend, the wedding ended at about 11 p.m. Rather early for most weddings we get, but it wasn't a super big affair. The bride went to bed. The groom went out drinking. At about 3 a.m., the best man and groom tell me his key isn't working and he can't get into his room. I remake the key and tell them if that doesn't work, his wife must have dead bolted the door. He was positive she never would do such a thing. Well, guess who locked her husband out of the room on their wedding night? Story 33. I actually called it already when I got the announcement, but the fact that she had to resort to sweets to go through the day just confirmed it. Six weeks later, she checks the bank withdrawal and an unusual amount of money was spent. Turns out the groom spent it on candy and a hooker and that was that. Story 34. Haven't read the thread yet, but I went to a wedding where the wife-to-be told the groom-to-be about 10,000 times in my presence before the wedding, obvi, that she did not want the cake smashed in her face. And if he smashed the cake in her face, they would have serious problems. He smashed the cake in her face. She had it annulled. Story 35. The bride smashed the cake in the groom's face. He put the piece he was holding back down and walked quickly out of the building. The DJ awkwardly transitioned back to music and dancing, but everyone was just standing around talking about what just happened. She followed him a few minutes later, and they came back to the reception for a bit. But it was weird and uncomfortable. They held on for a year before getting a divorce. Story 36. Bride refused to kiss the groom no matter what, and would reluctantly hold hands with him in front of people in photos. As soon as people's backs are turned, she yanks her hand off. They divorced a month later. Bride then remarried within a few months. Turns out it was an arranged marriage the moms forced on them. The groom and bride never really liked each other but went through with the wedding anyways. The bride was already in another relationship behind the groom's back long before the wedding. I was the groom. Story 37. They reconnected on Facebook almost a decade after their first breakup. She moved across country in the middle of the night without telling anyone. A few weeks later, they went to the courthouse to get married. Six months later, she moved back home without him or the U-Haul full of everything she owned. Pro tip. If you feel like you have to hide something from everyone you know because they will think it is a bad idea and try to talk you out of it, you're probably doing something really stupid. Story 38. We hadn't met the groom more than twice before the wedding. Our friend had moved out of state, and so we didn't see them often. My husband is an artist, and our friend asked him to draw a picture of the two of them. Just a simple sketch to make copies of to use as a coloring sheet for kids at the wedding. He'd given me an odd vibe when we'd seen him before, but I was wrapped up in visiting with my friend who I didn't get to see enough, so I figured I just didn't know him well enough. When my husband and I went to hand him the copies before the wedding, he was very curt and emotionless. As we were about to leave the room, it was like a light went on, and he graciously thanked us for the picture and thanked us for making the trip. It was as if he was an alien that remembered he had to act like a human. I had a terrible feeling, but who stops a wedding and says, I don't know this guy, but he acted funny a minute ago, so stop the wedding. Within a few months of the wedding, he became violent and threw her out of the house because her hair clogged the shower. She came back to get her things and he'd thrown them out in giant garbage bags with unpleasant and worker written on them. He bugged her car and began to show up places he knew she'd be so that she'd be intimidated out of events she wanted to attend of places she wanted or needed to go. He even made a scene at her office. She changed her name to throw him off her scent. When she ran into his parents right after he'd thrown her out, she broke down and told them what was going on. They told her they were sorry, but he'd done this to a previous wife. They didn't say anything because they'd hoped he'd changed. The whole lot of them are sociopathic. This was a few years ago and she's doing great. Very happy, healthy, and thriving. But I worry she may never feel like she can be with someone again. Story 39. My sister was a bridesmaid where the groom decided that his wedding day would be the day he would revisit his cola habit. The following morning as everyone was gathering for breakfast, the groom was wheeled out through the lobby on a stretcher after he woke up unresponsive. The brides dumped him that afternoon in the hospital. Marriage lasted 18 hours total and the bride still cashed everyone's checks even though her parents paid for the whole thing. Story 40. I found out my brother got married via email. I just wanted to let everyone that X and I went to the courthouse today. We ended up getting married because it's simpler this way. Nobody is pregnant. Six months later, Splitsville. On the plus side, she loved to paint. She painted his whole two-story foyer in his house. 
If she had stuck around another month or so, could have probably gotten mine painted too. Or stabbed. Bad person was Cray. Story 41. At my cousin's wedding, they were under a wooden arch intertwined with white roses. When the pastor uttered the words, If any of you has reasons why these two should not be married, speak now or forever hold your peace. A rose broke off the arch and bounced off the pastor's head. Everyone laughed. They ended up getting divorced. Story 42. I went to a wedding two months ago that I really hope ends in divorce because of how miserable the situation is. First, some context. This is the first and only man the bride has ever dated or had close relationship with. He has punched twice and pushed her over many times. B has cheated on her three times. Now for the wedding. The ceremony was 15 minutes and done outside in a city square. You could hear nothing. They had no vows. The kiss was lip to lip and lasted maybe one second. The after party was worse. The groom got. The bride, pregnant, sat with a miserable look on her face all night beside him. They had a cupcake tower instead of cake, and in the process of doling out the goodies, the bride dropped one. The groom snapped at her. Those cupcakes are five flipping dollars apiece, and demanded she pick them up without even offering to help. Their first dance was middle school levels awkward. Zero chemistry. The playlist sounded like it was made by a middle schooler. As a cute little joke, the maid of honor told the groom in her speech to lay your hand atop your wife's. Remember this moment because it is the last moment you'll have the upper hand in this relationship. The groom pulled his hand away, smirked, and said, Like hell it is. I could really go on and on with how awful the whole thing was. The worst thing was the bride's expression. Like a oh-no-wounded animal. Story 43. Several things. 1. The bride's 18th birthday was seven days before the wedding. The groom was just a few months older. 2. Maternity wedding dress. Her belly was bigger than her dollar store silk flower bouquet. 3. The groom's father officiated, but did not look the groom in the eye once the entire day. 4. In the carpool the way to the reception, one of our friends started a betting pool regarding how long the marriage would last. I bet one year, and as my get was the closest to the actual time of separation, I won. 5. Groom spent the majority of the reception standing outside and chain-smoking cigarettes with his best friend, and the bride eventually followed a group of us outside and called the groom out for avoiding her. In front of all of their closest friends, he called her a clingy bad person and then stormed away. She grabbed a cane out of my hand, remember, she was pregnant as hell, and said, I flipping hate him sometimes. They separated almost exactly a year later, though the divorce wasn't finalized for another year or so due to the multiple contentious court appearances and custody battles. Story 44? The bride was 24, an elementary school teacher. The groom was 40-something and a high school English teacher. We got there in a quarter, the guests were under the age of 18. They were all guests of the groom. Then we found out that the bride and her friends were all former students of this teacher. Most of the guests had been a student at this guy's school at one point or another. The couple is now getting a divorce because turns out he had a relationship with one of his students. Story 45. My brother's first wedding. They were both firstborn, with much younger siblings, so they were both very used to being in charge. Neither knew how to compromise on anything. At the reception, one of the other groomsmen and I stood watching them argue over some piddling little detail. He said, give them two years. I said, no, they're both really stubborn. They'll last five years. She walked out after five, twelve years. His second wedding, bride was white trash who could suck the joy out of a room simply by walking into it. At the reception, some teenage boys from her side of the family came in in ski masks with fake guns and kidnapped her for ransom. Our family was really uncomfortable with this, but we played along and kicked in cash which did go to the couple. They lasted 16 yates and two kids, but it was awful due to her terrible personality. She ended up cheating on him and leaving him. Story 46. One of my childhood friends got married at 17 to her boyfriend of less than three months. At first I was thinking, well, I know plenty of older couples that got married within a month. I was made a bridesmaid, so I was behind the scenes for the cow show. First thing that I noticed was wrong. He called her by the wrong name throughout their engagement. She has an unusual name, so I let it pass because I always just called her T when growing up. Second thing, the groom invited his ex-girlfriend to the wedding. You know, if you were good friends with your ex, I can see maybe inviting them, but not a girl who will show up and cry the whole ceremony. Third, the condom piñata. Fourth, the bride's mother was so drunk during the reception, she admitted that the bride's younger brother was the product of an affair with one of her patients. In front of the bride's father, her husband. And last but not least, the groom's father would not shut up about how he thought the whole thing was a mistake and how his son deserved a real woman. He made some lovely racial comments as well to the bride's family. And when the bride asked the groom to get his father to stop, the groom replied that she should just get used to it. Story 47. I'm a wedding DJ. 
I was given a request by the bride maybe an hour into what was scheduled to be a three-hour dance. Normally, when I get a request from either the bride or groom, I will ask them, do you want that now or at some point later? Especially if the song is not in the genre that I am playing in right now. She told me that she wanted it now, so I queued it up on the deck that wasn't playing the current song. She walked away happy, expecting that her song would be next. Immediately after she left my table, the groom walks up to me and asks me what she requested. I show him, he half laughs and tells me not to play it. Conflicted and surprised, I ask him, why not? To which he replies, she's an idiot, that song sucks. If you respond like that to a single song in a three-hour dance, then there's no way that you're going to respond well to something more serious when it comes up in the future. Among DJs, we call people like this repeat customers. Story 48, probably too late to the party. But for me, it was when the first thing my husband said to me after our vows was, now if you leave me, I get half of everything you have, with a big giddy grin on his face. I was so shocked I stopped walking and just stared at him. He didn't notice till he got to the car and then hollered at me to hurry up. Lasted about three years, which was about three years too long. Story 49. Family Member's Wedding During the planning stages of the wedding, the bride-to-be was a full-on bridezilla. Her way or the highway? There were serious talks of canceling the wedding approximately a month before it occurred. The bride-to-be pushed not to cancel because my family already bought plane tickets and they're non-refundable. Just before the wedding, myself and a few other family members met at a bar. We put together a bet of how quickly they'd divorce. I won the bet. I gave them a year, which was the shortest period allowed. My family members worked very hard to make sure everything went smoothly. Their reward? Thank you for coming to my wedding, from the bride. Like they didn't work their asses off serving, preparing food and the like. During the reception, a bunch of the bride's family went to their cars to get something. Minutes later, the reception hall reeked of marijuana. Turns out they were dumb and smoking right next to the AC unit. Whoops! Edit ad. Forgot this one. The reception hall had one set of bathrooms. Your typical one for males, one for females setup. Bridezilla decided she needed her own, so she hijacked the women's room and marked it as bride only. Because that's reasonable to do, apparently. They divorced six months later. She cheated on him with the manager of her workplace, which was KFC. Story 50. Last year, one of my friends got married in a beautiful wedding. Her husband refused to dance at all because he said he didn't like to. She finally convinced him after a screaming match from the parking lot that everyone heard. While dancing, she was looking at him lovingly, and he just stared over her off into space. Immediately after, he walked off with his groomsmen, and they smoked candy behind one of the buildings and got hammered drunk off moonshine. He spent no time at all with family or anyone else at the wedding. The divorce got finalized a couple weeks ago. Story 51. Cousin's wedding. The groom was the type of juiced-up douchebag with white sunglasses. Random fist pumping. Favorite sport is ultimate frisbee. Lots of beer me bro was heard at the wedding. After the wedding, when you go to the hall for the party and they enter to music while the DJ introduces them, he came in fist pumped a bit, slammed the door behind him right in the bride's face. He didn't even realize it. Even with the crowd's reaction, just went on fist pumping through the crowd to the head table. Story 52. They stood a good four feet apart from each other at the altar. The groomsmen's speeches were about their kid and how the day was great with free wine. Nothing about them and my brother was one. He couldn't think of anything good to say about them as a couple, so he just didn't. They aren't divorced yet, but we are all just waiting. Story 53. One that I'm surprised has lasted at least 10 years. The bride and groom were so pretentious about everything about the wedding. When we arrived for the reception, we were kept waiting outside in the hallway for two hours. The reason? They were having the photographer print 8x10 photos from the actual wedding to put on each table in the reception venue. Then, during the reception, they were asking everyone what they thought of the pictures. Story 54. My cousin's wedding. They had been together for about two years. Had a baby together. The whole day was about my cousin, the groom. Every speech that was made was about how great of a guy he is, etc. Spoiler. Cousin is not a great guy. He's an annoying pest. He held me down when I was younger and tried to get another cousin to kiss me. His mother even forced the bride to make her daughter, groom's sister, the MOH. The speech she gave was borderline incestuous. Anyway, during the ceremony, the priest said something about being together forever, and the bride said, maybe we'll stay together. My family immediately started taking bets. Six months won. Story 55. We went for ice cream with the both of them the night before their wedding. They admitted they wanted to do it because it seemed like all their friends were. They were talking about the major problems they had. We already knew, we saw it, and heard it all the time. They were aware marriage won't fix it but hoped it would. I just listened. I never said anything the whole night. We just let them talk. I didn't know what say. It was a cute little wedding. They looked happy. Everyone came. Everything went smooth. 
Oh, no shame. Lasted six months. Story 56. Oh, fudge. I forgot about this. Back in the 1990 SS, my GF's brother was a lowlife with lowlife WT friends. One of them ended up owing an outlaw biker a ton of money. So the biker gave him a bunch of chemicals and told him to get to work making crank. So Dummy McDumbus checks into a cheap motel and starts cooking meth right in the middle of town with his borderline retarded tweaker bad person GF. I found out all this on the wedding day. So after the cops kick down the door, they make bail. And in a last ditch bid to get conjugal visits and a lighter sentence, they arranged a quick wedding on her mom's front porch with a Native American priest officiating. He was some old white bread hippie who watched too many movies. The wedding song was a song on a mixtape played on a single speaker cassette player. It was the lowest, trashiest, most pathetic thing I've ever witnessed. Welcome to Centralia, Washington. Story 57. It was an Indian wedding, and it was only the bride and her side of the family there. Something had gone kinda wrong, and she says, Oh, it's fine. We'll do it right next time, whilst loads of old Indian women look at her with disgust. The couple ended up having a massive argument after the wedding because they both had been cheating on each other, and it was on a public Facebook post. Edit. There. Story 58. I've been trying to look for the video, but it surfaced a while back and has since then been removed. Basically, the groom gets beyond wasted and gives the sloppiest lap dance, an awkward garter pull, and puts his face in the bride's crotch, leading to a bunch of people pulling him off. The then goes to the bride's face where she is trying to keep it together. She looked humiliated. Edit. Grammar. Story 59. 1. The bride and groom got so smashed at their wedding, they never consummated the marriage. They came to stay with me as part of their honeymoon. They were German, I'm Scottish. Three weeks later, they still hadn't sealed the deal, so to speak. 2. Friend married a Canadian lass, so she could stay in the country as opposed to going home and waiting two years to get back in. They were married four, five years, I think. Even if you love someone, don't marry for convenience sake. She can now stay in the UK without needing to be married. 3. Another friend married a Canadian lass for the exact same reason as above. As they were in the UK and they bride apparently had no friends in the UK who could attend the wedding, despite living here for at least four years as a student. The groom was not allowed to have his friends there, as she didn't want to be sad. Lasted four, five years with about three-year separation in the middle, with her going home for unowork and him living with his parents, trying to be a rock star. She can now stay in the UK without needing to be married. She now has a family baker business in Canada for gluten-free vegan pish, and he works in some guitar shop in London. Story 60. My current husband got married to a woman who had cheated on every guy she'd ever dated. He knew it was a bad idea. We all knew it was a bad idea. Spoiler alert! She cheated on him because marrying a cheater is a bad idea. She was tilde four mo pregnant at the time. He filed for divorce after 11 whole months, and it was finalized like a year later because the judge kept postponing the hearings because he had tea times. Yes, I was at my husband's first wedding, which is not weird at all, I swear. Story 61? Hmm, well, I'll out myself. There were a few things. Picture this, if you will. My best friend, driving my car in her bridesmaid dress, me smothered in layers of lace of bows and satin in the back seat flanked on either side by my groom's two best female friends also in bridesmaid dresses. My best friend looks at me through the rearview mirror and says, You don't have to do this. I took out all my savings this morning. We can just keep driving until we run out of gas. Neither of the other bridesmaids argued. We'll just list the rest. 1. Groom shows up late and cow-faced drunk too. Groom grumbles about having to pose for wedding photos when he'd rather be hanging out with his groomsmen. 3. I'd already begged my mother weeks in advance to let me back out of this. She guilt-tripped me about non-refundable deposits and told me it was just cold feet. 4. Groom did not want to leave the wedding reception because he wanted to continue drinking with his friends. It was after midnight and I just wanted to go home, get out of my dress, fudge, and go to bed. 5. No close relationship on wedding night as the groom is pissed, you made him leave the party, and you're heartbroken as you realize you've made a terrible mistake. Kids, don't get married before you can drink, okay? We were separated five months later. Divorce finalized just over a year later. Story 62. I'm late to this, but here goes. Scene, 1983. Groom and bride are from rival North London crime clans. Both clans contain a lot of dodgy geezers, many of whom can't make the wedding, due to prior invitations from Her Majesty. However, enough make it to the wedding for it to look like the opposing armies at Waterloo. The battle, not the station. At the reception, the groom gets up to make his speech. He thanks everyone involved. The vicar, the caterers, the hotel where the reception was taking place, his dear old mum, his diamond geezer dad, who was unfortunately detained for doing over the Midland Bank in Haringey. Everyone got a thank you, ending with the best man. I'd like to thank Dean, who's shown me exactly what I'm marrying.
He's been shagging my missus for the last six months. He turns to Dean, who now has a very sickly smile frozen on his boat. You unpleasant. Groom walks out. His mum bellows, you flipping slag at the bride. Then the fight began. I was a 22-year-old student, working the bar for some extra money, so I bravely went and hid in the cellar until the peelers arrived in sufficient numbers to sort it all out.